Well, the World Water Day is celebrated every 22nd day of March and as Kenya joined the world on Friday to mark the day under the theme of leaving no one behind, it did so under the weight of the millions of Kenyans who have no access to clean drinking water. But as the government keeps making promises of working to ensure water reaches every Kenyan, the scars of last year's drought remain when the country found itself on the verge of a crisis caught in the middle of one of the worst droughts in decades and dangerously low on water. A few months on, has the country learned anything? Well, Zena Bondati now expounds on the water stress that millions of Kenyans live under. This is a great thirst. Lamu is one of Kenya's most magical places. Sitting pretty on Kenya's coast, thousands of tourists cross these waters to the islands to experience the magic. <laughs> But beneath the allure of tourism and the rich culture that make Lamu magical, there's a lesser pleasant reality that is at the core of the existence of the people of this island. These people are thirsty. Water, fresh water particularly, is scarce, and last year's drought was particularly tough. Kizingitini on Pate Island, located in Lamu East constituency, is among the parts of Lamu that suffers perennial water scarcity. For the locals here, the value of a drop of water is an entire boat ride from Lamu Island, 40 kilometers away. But even that is not always guaranteed. The next season, most of the water in, in, in so many parts of Lamu is turning to be saline of late. Like we have a whole of Lamu East constituency or sub, sub, sub county where water is saline. For 200 years, these streets of Takwa were so full of life, sustaining 2,500 people who lived here and the 150 households within the walls of Takwa ruins. And for those 200 years, this settlement could withstand anything, including attacks from neighboring islands. But the one thing that the people here could not live without is water. This town is serviced by two wells, this one and another one just outside the walls of the town. Now what happened is that the waters within this well started becoming saline. Now engineers call it saltwater intrusion, but to the people here it just simply means that they could not drink that water anymore and so they had to leave. It is because of the climatic changes in this entire region. Uh, I think it is one of the reasons why the water table, the fresh water table went low and finally, uh, the saline water overtakes fresh water. Climate change, whether we like it or not, is on us. There's a lot of pollution. The clouds are changing. The rains are coming very late. And part of the problem for Lamu is that um, at the back of the old town, there were a, a, a series of sand dunes, which used to act, act as a, a water catchment area for fresh water. But because of the increasing population and the increasing usage and consumption of that fresh water, uh, it's now becoming brackish. So they're finding that some of their shallow wells in Lamu are now pulling brackish water instead of fresh water. Several research has been conducted in the town some years back. Uh, some researchers have come and then they thought that okay, we could find fresh water just nearby the site, uh, maybe somewhere near the hills just before you, you approach the, the open sea. Uh, recently, we have been able to dig one of the, the wells in the town, but uh, unfortunately, we couldn't find fresh water. One of the reasons I came here was because I felt climate change was going to affect uh, the water availability 
um, all over the country. So we're finding all the way up and down the coast from you know, places like uh, Dar es Salaam, uh, Mombasa, um, to a certain extent also down all the way down to Maputo and all the way up to Mogadishu. Uh, that uh, population centres that had water, fresh water, no longer have it. For example, in Mombasa's case, we're seeing diversions of uh, huge amounts of water to the city, and it's still only able to, to um, satisfy 60% of the demand. Um, in Dar es Salaam, there are very few sources of fresh water available anywhere. I Takwa ruins on Manda Island perhaps represents the future that Lamu County faces as boreholes continues turning saline, a future that the county government says it is desperate and quickly trying to prevent from becoming a reality. We are getting more numbers because of the opening up of Lamu as a county. We have the mega projects like the coal powered projects, we have the issue of uh, the lapset, we have the construction of the, um, of the Gersen Lamu main road and uh, the associated developments with, with, the, with the lapset that are supposed to be, uh, uh, I mean, which we expect. So there is upsurge in terms of population. One, for those people who come to settle permanently, and also you have people who come to work in those uh, related developments. Island ya Lamu ni sehemu ya chemchemi ya maji na ni Lamu Sanjons ama tunasema Shela Sanjons. Hizo Sanjons ndio zimehifadhiwa ni chemchemi za maji peke yake ambazo zinaweza ku supply maji kisiwa kisima cha Lamu. Na hiyo sehemu iwapo zitakuwa hazitohifadhiwa labda in future tu, tunatarajia kwamba pengine na watu alamu waweza kukosa maji kwa sababu ya encroachment the only things that we think that can are, uh, i mean are solutions to lamu is we have to tap water from tana river and supply it to lamu otherwise the shallow wells that we have are drying up and they're becoming saline and then the only other alternative that we have is d salination of, 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 sal of, of this saline water, which is turning up to be a very expensive affair that the county is struggling. The full capacity of the plant is in the region of 40,000 litres a day, um, but the plant will be producing it around 12,000 litres a day because it's operating on solar power only. One such plant is in Kizingitini, serviced by two wells. Locals are limited to just two jerrycans per household per day. That's 40 liters only per family. This is part of the rationing program to enable them to survive the drought. the salt fresh salt waste Basis Africa runs one of the three desalination plants in Lamu, located in Siu. Like the other two, its capacity is limited and can only supply eight liters of water per day per person. The plant is solar powered. There have been some concerns that desalination is not necessarily a good idea because it strips the water of all minerals and what is left is just a plain flat liquid with little benefits to the body. Desalination has its own limitation. The countries that have perfected this uh, desalination uh, process are countries which have no alternative water source, like the Mid Middle East, the Arab world, 
where the only source of water is the sea. When you go to Dubai, when you go to Oman, these countries are using seawater to support their services and water needs. But in this country, Kenya, we still have fresh water sources. Desalination is an expensive venture because of the mechanization involved. So in the end, sometimes the cost of water outstrip the cost of oil. 2018 will go down in history as the year Nairobi nearly ran out of water. Caught in one of the worst droughts, the city found itself on the verge of thirst as the rains failed and Dakaine Dam, the city's biggest source of water, hit the lowest levels in history at 75% empty. That dam holds 70 million meters cube of water. Every day in Nairobi requires 526,000 meters cube per day. So as we pump out water from Dakaine, there must be an equivalent recharge from the rivers. And if these rivers are depleted or they are dry, then you can only use what is in store and it can only last a certain period. The system here was constructed in 1993. At the time it was completed, there was enough water for the city and there was even extra. It was always a tradition to always have a 10-year-old plan, a 10-year plan. So it was expected that in 2003, that another system would be constructed because we operate on 10-year plan. Now when we picked up, we are picking up 10 years late. Of course the population has been rising. And now that is why now we are getting into this situation where the population growth has exceeded the water available. This is the crisis that many parts of the country find themselves in as the skies remain clear and the taps run dry. So bad was the 2018 water crisis that more than 10 schools in Baringo County were closed and 30 more in Nairobi faced the threat of closure. But this water crisis was not only unique to Kenya. Cape Town, one of the biggest cities in Africa, made headlines when it nearly ran out of water. A clock was put on it and the countdown to day zero began. This news went uh, like wildfire in the whole world. Cape Town, you know, is, is actually the, the best city in, uh, in South Africa. And uh, it's the cleanest, by the way. And you never expect that they will do everything right and fail to plan for water supply. And that is a situation that, as a minister for water, I would not want to find ourselves in. So the lessons learned is, one, water is not free. The other lesson I've learned from Cape Town is, uh, forward planning is key. We must project population growth, the water sources, and, wo and, the, and the transfer of water. Kenya is not as bad as many countries, so the future is good. It's only, we, we need more and more technical people to be trained. We need to be more innovative. We need to restructure the way we use water and the way we treat water. Kenya's water supply heavily relies on rainfall to fill up the dams and rivers that supply the water, meaning that any delay in the rains greatly affects the country. No rain equals no water. Nairobi, for instance, would run out of water within six months if it didn't rain at all for an entire year. The dam is no longer, is, go, is going forward, may no longer support the demand of today and the going into the future. That's why our strategy as a ministry is to increase storage. We have a map, we have 57 dams that we have already identified, mapped out across the country, so that any rain water, any runoff, any service water, we are able to store the way we have done Dakaini. We have Mwache, which is 10 times the size of uh, Dakaini. In 2013, Kenya discovered underground water in Lotikipi, Turkana County, with 200 billion cubic meters of water, enough to serve the entire country for 70 straight years. Yet Turkana County itself is water scarce. Simon. <laughs> this resource has not yet been exploited because the first test showed that the water was too salty for human consumption and would need to be desalinated through reverse osmosis. But Cabinet Secretary for Water, Simon Chilugui, is denying this, insisting that the aquifer is actually fresh water. 
The delay in exploitation, he says, is because the Lotekipi aquifer is not just a Kenyan resource and that exploiting it would need bilateral talks. Lotekipi is an aquifer that we are exploring. In fact, one month ago I was in Ethiopia because we share this aquifer's crown water. We want to sign um, a kind of, uh, we want to sign um, a protocol through the Nile, through the IGAT, we want to sign a protocol that allows us to share knowledge and resources on exploration of these aquifers which cut across Ethiopia and Kenya. The Water Services Regulatory Board has in the last few years mapped out the country to determine exactly how many Kenyans have access to water of drinkable quality and the sources of this water. The results showed that only 60% of the population have access to water, while a greater percentage of the population is not covered by piped water. The WASREB report revealed that at least 40% of the water piped cannot be accounted for, as it disappears before it even gets to the consumer. In Nakuru Rural, for instance, 85% of the water is lost in the pipes without ever getting to the consumer. Kenya is actually a water scarce country and it's registered as such. So because for survival, you, mean, you need about 100,000 meters cubed of water per, per year, per person. In Kenya, we are doing 647 meters cubed of water per person. So we are actually a water scarce country. So we should treat each drop of water with a lot of respect. I would want to urge those counties, for example, which are up to now and don't with, uh, with enough water, to really take it uh, and get it as God given. They really need to visit those counties which are facing these problems now for them to, to be able to uh, visualize the problem that they will be in if they don't take care of the water sources that they have. Lamu County says it can provide water for its people within five years if it gets the financial muscle it needs. And with the long rain season already late, fears abound that the country is staring at another drought year, but hope remains that last year's dangerous situation will serve as a lesson of what happens when water security is not planned for. Zainab Wandati, NTV.